What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tip for you. So in this video I'm going to show you how to create a template file so you can have a custom model open whenever you open up SketchUp. Um, today's video is brought to you by the SketchUp Essentials course. The SketchUp Essentials course is a course I put together to provide more comprehensive SketchUp training. So that course contains everything from comprehensive instruction on all of SketchUp's tools all the way through things like interior design modeling, modeling for layout, and photorealistic rendering. It's basically designed to be the equivalent of a two-day introduction to SketchUp course. So if you want some start to finish SketchUp training, make sure you check out the sketchupessentials.com slash course. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so for any of you that have been watching my videos for a while, you know that when my models open up, I have a custom template file that opens up with an image with a 2D face me component that I've created myself. And so I wanted to walk you through first the creation of that 2D face me component and also how to save that as a template file so that opens up whenever you open up your models instead of opening up the SketchUp default model. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to find an image that you want to use to create your 2D face me component. So in this case you're going to go up to file, import, and you're going to navigate to whatever image you want to use. So in this case, I'm going to navigate to this me and Bonnie picture. And you're going to want to make sure you have the use image as image button checked down here at the bottom. And then you can just double click on this and you can just bring this into your model. And you can just click once to start setting this and then you can click again to finalize this. And the first thing we want to do is we want to resize this so that it's, I'm going to erase out the default model I have in here. The first thing you want to do when you do this is you want to resize this so that it's actually an accurate height because you want to be able to use this as a visual indicator for scale in the future. So if you're like six feet tall, for example, you want to be able to use that as an indicator of, of scale in your model. So if you have your default model in the middle here and you start modeling shapes over here, you can look at your model to see how big those shapes are. And so you're going to use the tape measure tool to do that. And so the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure you turn guide mode off because you don't want to create guides. You actually want to measure this. And so to turn, if you remember, create guides will basically put these dotted line guides in your model and you don't want to do that. And so when you activate the tape measure tool, there's a little plus on the lower right hand corner of it that you can see by the uh, cursor. You're just going to tap the control key so the plus goes away. And then you're just going to come in here and you're just going to measure from some point to whatever your height is. So in this case, I'm about 5'11 and this is actually pretty close. So I went ahead and clicked in there. I'm just going to type in 5 foot 11 inches and hit the enter key and what that's going to allow me to do is that's going to let me resize the model. And so the height between this point and this point is now 511 because I typed in 511. So once you have this scaled properly what you're going to do is you're just going to come in here and you're going to trace out um, your shapes. And so whenever you do this generally speaking um, you should just kind of trace this where the colors when you're creating a 2D face me component you can get as detailed as you want but generally I try to trace these wherever the colors change. So I would trace out my shirt as a separate image. I would trace out my arms as a separate image. Um, my hat and my face would be different because they're different colors. So that's generally how you would do this. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to trace this and then uh, we can get back to this. And the one thing I do want to note is make sure when you're doing this that you're tracing on your actual model or on this face. So it's really easy to actually inference up and draw a line like up above and then be kind of drawing in here. And then when you're done, you've got this kind of weird shape that isn't actually on the face and so you can't really close it in. So just be careful that you're actually drawing on the face. And you can see how my cursor, when it's on the face, turns this kind of purple color. So that's kind of a visual indicator that the points that you're drawing are actually on the face. So you can watch for that. That'll definitely help you out. And you'll probably come in here and have a couple mistakes that you've made that you need to kind of fix. Um, but that's okay. And the other thing that I would recommend is try to do one face and then go ahead and make sure that it fills in so that you don't get like way into this and then realize that you haven't traced something properly. So in this case, I would finish tracing out my shorts. And I would just make sure that that shape that I drew actually fills in with a face. 
and you can go ahead and reverse the faces as you do this and the other thing maybe what I'll do is I'll use the move tool in copy mode to kind of move this over All right, so what you could do is you could come in here and you could create a material and you could call it something like shorts and go ahead and click the enter key and then you can go in and edit that and you can use this option for match color of object and model and you could actually click on the shorts in your image and you can see how this isn't working right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on this copy of this image and I'm gonna click explode and so what that does is this makes this an actual geometrical face or geometric face instead of um, a group like this is over here so now you can come in and you can select this you can do match color of object and model and you can click on this face in order to get that color and then you can drop that into your image just like this so you can see how I made a copy of this image I exploded it and then I created a new texture and I matched the color using the edit option All right, and one thing to note when you're using this picker is sometimes match color of object and model isn't working. You can also use this ob option for match color on screen. So if uh, it won't pick out the color using this option right here, the match color of object and in model use the other one for match color of object on screen in order to get the color that you want. So then you can just go in and just finish off doing this in your model. So you're doing the same thing where you're creating your custom materials and you're also tracing out your different shapes. So you just kind of want to rough out this shape. Don't worry about getting too detailed because we're just going to make this a 2D face me component. All right, so once you've done all of that and gotten everything closed in and you've kind of made this the way that you want to make it, you can either come in here and you can delete out your images or you can just kind of move them out of the way. Since this is an image rather than a face like we made this one when we exploded it, you can come in here and you can just kind of group this stuff. And you can also adjust these colors if you want to. Um, in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna right click and I'm just gonna make this a component. I'm just gonna call this Justin and Bonnie number two because I already have one of these and so actually before I even do that I think I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stand this up so I'm just gonna select everything and then I'm gonna use the rotate tool so I'm gonna tap the Q key and I'm gonna tap the arrow in order to lock this to the red axis so I just tap the right arrow and then I just rotate this up 90 degrees and you can see how I've got some extra geometry in here somehow um, I guess I accidentally drew that behind my face you can just erase that out it's not a big deal and so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this we're gonna select it and we're going to right click and if you need to make any adjustments like in this case I kinda wanna stand it up a little bit cuz it kinda looks like I'm leaning you can make those adjustments here and then once you've done that just select everything right click to make component and you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna call this I'm gonna call it Justin and Bonnie 2 and in this case what we want to do is we want to check this little box in here for always face camera so always face camera means that um, basically no matter where you rotate this this is gonna keep this facing towards you so and make sure this box for replace selection with component is checked as well and go ahead and click create and so what that's going to do is you can see how now that's an image that's in here that's always going to face your model. So no matter where that is, that's going to face your model. So once you have this kind of the way that you want it, you can come in here and you can delete out this other stuff. And so what we want to do is now we want to make this a template file. So the first thing you want to do is place this wherever you want it. So generally speaking, I like to keep mine where about the tip of my toe is on the origin, uh, maybe off to the side of the origin a little bit, but just from a height standpoint, I kind of like that to be like right on the ground. So you can see how now I have this component in here and it's facing me and I don't have anything else in my model. So now what we're going to do is we're going to save this as a template file so we can use it later. And so in order to do that, you're just going to go up to file, save as template, and you're just gonna name this whatever you want. So in this case, I'm gonna name this Justin and Bonnie 2. And when I tab out of that, you'll notice that it automatically creates my file name. And you can see how 
you can check this box for set as default template. And so if you check this box for set as default template and then you click the save button, then it'll open this template file up every time you open up SketchUp. And you can manage those template files by going up to help, welcome to SketchUp, which is also the uh, page that may show up every time you open SketchUp, depending on if this box is checked or not. And if you go down into your templates, you can select the different template options. So SketchUp automatically saves these in the template file. So you can switch between these and you can click the option for choose template in order to set your template file. So my default template is my me and Bonnie file. So every time I start using SketchUp, it opens up that file. So that's where I'm going to end today's video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Um, do you have your own custom template files that you use? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.